Praise our God. Amen. Praise our God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise our God. God's about to use your life now more than ever. Now more than ever. God's about to use you. Let's go talk. Amen. Come go with me to Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. It's in the fire where you, you, you learn him more and more. It's in the fire where you discover who God is. It's in the fire where you get a revelation of God. And when you're in the fire, you got to say, God, give me this revelation I need. I remember saying to, uh, I don't see him right now. Oh, there he is. He's right there. When he went through, he went through. Roy said, take a moment. Don't miss this moment. I know it don't feel good, but in this time, you got you to gotta get that revelation of who God is in this thing. So, amen. You go through some moments, some clouds, some rivers, some storms, some fire, but don't miss God in it. Hallelujah. And when you find him, it's sweet. Is sweet. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow. But I found a Savior. And what? Sweet, I know. Oh, come on, young people. I gotta take we gotta take you back to the old school. Some of us are old school, some new school, some no school. We gotta bring you to some school. Amen. Pray. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For, I, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Let me read it again. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good report. But through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Last week when we were with you by way of virtue, we continued, amen, uh, sharing from the word of God for this time and season, talking about the word of faith and the word of prayer. As God takes our prayer lives to a new dimension. Why? Because you're about to walk in new dimensions. There's some things you're not going to walk into. There's some things you're not going to see or handle until your prayer life has been pushed to another place. You can't keep just standing there and saying, Lord, I thank you for my nickel and my dime. And, uh, and Lord, I need a piece of cake and I need a hamburger and expect the supernatural. If you want to see the supernatural, you want to have what you never had before. What's up with the air conditioning, by the way? If you want to have what you never had before, praise our God, and you will. And amen, before we witness the coming of the Lord, he's going to, He's. Uh, you hear me say that over and over again. He's going to manifest the wonders of God. You've been chosen to manifest the wonders of God. Hey, but in order to do that, it's going to take prayer. I, may I remind you, may I remind you that, that I've taught you before and taught you out there that when you study the word of God, every major move of God that you see in the word of God, uh, prayer went before that move of God. Always, you see, prayer is involved in major move of God. Uh, the birthing out of the church of the living God, the birthing out of the church of the living God on the day of Pentecost. It was prayer that preceded the birthing out of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you can go even in the days of Jesus being born, you had Simeon praying and you had Anna praying, praise our God. And so you see that you can go all the way back to the Old Testament, major moves of God. Let me remind you the deliverance that was 
was wrought when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. God responded to their prayer, to their cry. And so it's very important. So as we move forward, as you move forward in the next dimension of prayer, praise our God. God wants to show you the power of the word that must be executed and must be communicated out of your lips. And so how many say, I know there's more, and I know God's call for more to be manifested in my life. Praise our God. Let me remind you, God had us in Ezekiel 37 as one of the base foundation scriptures to support what God's given us today and what I'm sharing with you today. What did God tell us out of Ezekiel? He said, speak to the bones. Speak to the very bones. Everybody got to deal with bones. Everybody got dry bones to deal with. Everybody. Amen. Whether you're in it, you're facing a dry bone or you will face it. What do I mean by dry bone? Impossible situations. It doesn't, amen, it's not, con it is not constricted upon a certain age. It's not for uh, older people, middle-aged people, younger people. Uh, you got our, our young group. We got our young adults. We have our millennials or whatever you want to call them. And you, you need scholarships. You need your, you need your student loan to be covered and it's going to take a miracle. Come on somebody. You can, streak, you can speak to those dry bones, praise our God, and change laws. Come on somebody. When you Don't you know your mouth can change and shift laws and systems? Your mouth, come on somebody, your mouth will change, will frame a whole world. We read that. So I say that to say this, to no matter what generation is represented here today, the power of the tongue, the power of praying the word of God is significant. The power of saying what God says is very important in your life right now. I want to, amen, Holy Spirit said, just remind you and to, and to tell you and that, that God wants to use your mouth like never before. Somebody say, God's about to use my mouth like never before. Amen. As a matter of fact, God's about to use your life like never before. I know it kind of sounds cliche, but these are the facts and this is what God is saying. Are you still here today? Now, don't, don't be distracted by the heat because, you know, you've been out there at the park the other day and it's a hundred thousand degrees you was out there come on praise the god so don't come to church tell me i can't take it come on somebody amen so keep fanning and let's stay focused on the word of god is that all right today amen so you see the power of the word Amen. And God said, you're going to have to frame your world by the word of God. In Ezekiel 1 and 3, the Bible says, through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. We taught you last week that word frame actually means to adjust, to fit, to mend, to perfect. Amen. To repair, uh, 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 to, to, to equip, to put in order, to arrange. And so we taught you last week, just by week way of review. You all understand? Amen. Y'all still here? And so we understand when I used to read that, uh, 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 that I used to read, I always just saw it from one, uh, one, one perspective or understood that, that scripture from one point of view or one perspective that, that through the word of God, which is true, that through the word of God, the world was framed. In other words, uh, uh, the, 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 the physical physical world when God spoke it in, into existence in Genesis 1 that whatever God spoke it, it, it was there it was done uh, the earth the waters and when God renovated the earth it was by his word and so I thought it was for that particular time Sue that's it but when I did a further study of the text amen and really went back to uh, 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 understood it from the Greek and, and what it really meant uh, it, it, it actually means that through the word of God the ages were planned by the word of God so when it says that the world was framed that word world uh, 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 Shante came from the Greek word eon which speaks of ages so it tells you that through the word of God the ages the ages developed through the word of God how it wasn't just what he said in eternity past amen the ages did not unfold just what he's just be as a result of what he said in Genesis. It was his rhema that he spoke. His rhema. And how did he speak his rhema? He spoke his rhema through his people. Come on, somebody. And so God speaks his word to his people. And when he wants to frame the world, he speaks his word through his people. And his people, Mother Sergeant, it echoes and says, What thus saith the Lord. So you got to understand that the rhema is not in the sky. The rhema, a 
amen, is not uh, something uh, from without. The rhema has been downloaded. You've been entrusted. We've been entrusted with the divine utterance of God. And when we utter what he says, amen, and use our tongue, there is a framing. And so, amen, even uh, when it comes to your destiny, your destiny is shaped not just best based on what you believe God is saying about your life, but you got to begin to speak the divine utterance of God concerning your destiny. And then you see that things are framed and shaped and come together. Are you listening, somebody? Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. So you see the power of the spoken word and the significance, the power of praying the word of God. And so God has a impressed upon my spirit to keep encouraging his people and admonishing the people of God to speak the word of God that amen and faith that what he says keep saying it in faith and you're going to see what God wants you to have it will show up in your life this is where it is people are frustrated people are wondering when am I going to see it when am I going to handle it I know what God told me I know the witness and the confirmation that I have and I believe in God for these great things and, and they are mountains in my life and I'm talking to the mountains when is it going to change you keep speaking what thus saith the Lord are you hearing but it's very important that you know the will of God so as you pray let me as you pray you pray the word of God you speak the word of God you speak to situations amen you use the word of God to speak to situations oh you're right and it will change it will frame your world it will repair. Amen. Holy Ghost gave me a demonstration. Can I give you a demonstration? I want you, and you can, you, if you want to use your cell phone, you can use your cell phone and take pictures if you want. I want you, I want you to uh, 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 move this camera just back a little bit. I want you to take a good look at this altar. Look at the, the altar area. Take a good look at the altar. All right, everybody? Take a good look. Take a picture there if you want. Not, not at me, just the altar if you want to. Just, just, just look at it. Just look at the curtains and look at the wires and look at the stairs. Everybody, look. take a good look. You got a good look? All right, we're going to do this demonstration together. You that are out there, amen, the cameras are letting you look at the altar. See how it is purple, right? And amen, and you see the rug and you see the stairs, don't you, right? Well, I, 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 want, I want to change the landscape. I, I, want, I want to change the look for me. You got it? Everybody got it? I just want to change some things. You hear me? Follow me. Uh, uh, Pittman, I want to I change the front. I want to change the front. Uh, 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 Lionel and Minister Lionel and Minister uh, uh, Hassan, bring me my t and be careful with my table because that costs a lot of money. Bring me my table. Uh, bring me my I want to change. I want to change some things. I want to change some things. I want to change some things up. Bring me and be careful now. Praise our God. Amen. You, you can play softly because I know y'all don't know where I'm going, but I do. Amen. You, you're doing good, sir. Praise our God. And just put it right there in front of me. Just want to bring a few changes. Amen. And put it right there. Put it, put it right there. Everybody taking a good look. Put that right there. Where's that other tall table, that black table that sometimes we preach from? Put, put that next to there. Put that next to that. Yeah. Amen. Praise our God. And um, I want to change some things. And uh, those flowers that are over there. Yeah, to put the flowers. I'm not the best designer, <laughs> but we're going to work it in a minute. And put the flowers on the table. Praise our God. Does somebody, where's the mic stand? Would you bring me a mic stand? Amen. And put the mic stand here. And let me have one of those fancy chairs, would you? Would you give me a that's it? Put the and, and pull, thank you. Pull that table out just a little bit. Pull it out just a little bit. P put the chair. Put the chair in the front of yeah, put the chair there. Put the chair in front of the table. Y'all still here? Don't worry, say so what kind of church is this? Prophetic. Pray pr not pathetic, prophetic. Amen. Good, nice. Take that pillow and put that pillow in the chair. Very good. Put that chair. And, and would you take this take this podium and move this podium, put move this podium out the way. Y'all y'all looking? Take a look. Now now give me that white chair. Put the white chair on this side and put another white chair on that side. Put another white chair on that side. Yeah, good. Very good. Take a white chair and put it there. Did anybody take a picture? Put the right there. That's good. Oh, right there. Put the right chair there. 
wonderful. And now take another white chair and, and put it on this side. Did, did anybody take a picture? Anybody take a picture? No, before. You take a picture before, you take a picture before. All right, look at the picture that you had before. Would you look at the picture that you had before? And then look at the picture that you had. Is, uh, is it the same? Put the clock on the table. Put the clock there. Thank you. Amen. Praise our God. All right. Let me hold your Bible. Let me lay your Bible on the table. Let me lay the Bible on the table. Open up the Bible. G get a good look. Everybody get a good look there. All right. Get a good look. All right. Now look at the word, the first picture that you had. The first picture that you had. All right. Now, now look at it right here. Look at it. Now, does this look like your first picture? Don't look like your first picture. Well, now, what happened? I said, I want to change the landscape. I declared my the will. And then I gave instructions to change some things and frame this area. And now you see that what I saw and what I desired, I spoke it and gave instructions and the whole altar was reframed. Just at the disclosure, I'm done really, just at the disclosure of the will, I made known my will. You didn't even know where I was going. I said, I want to change the landscape on the altar. And you took a picture of an altar that had no table, no chair, no mic stand, no chair to the left, to the right, no flower, no stand, no pillow. You took a picture of something that was empty. But at the spoken word and command, somebody was there to follow it out. Come on, somebody. You got to know the power of the word. You got to know that all you got to do is say it. Come on, somebody. Amen. And frame the world and so now you got to understand something uh, this is tangible what I said you saw some tangible things I said bring me the flower amen you saw the material flower and you brought it I said bring me the table you saw a material table and you brought it come on somebody you saw a material desk amen and you brought it you saw all this is solid and material and what the enemy don't want you to know amen that though you saw and then the material I spoke it and you saw the material you got to know the power of the spoken word though it be invisible is as just and more so tangible than what you see that's the power of the spoken word that when the word is going out there something is happening in the spirit and things are coming together in your life that's why Ezekiel could say dry bones we're going to live again because God said so this was all all in the spirit but in the spirit things begin to shake and to move in the spirit there was a noise in the spirit things came together I'm trying to tell you beloved saints by way of the Holy Ghost that when you open up your mouth things are moving in the spirit things are coming together and being redressed and reframed but the devil want to shut down your mouth the devil want to shut down your voice he want to shut Shut down your word, but there's power in the spoken word that I spoke, I willed it, I spoke it, and it was framed, and the whole decor was changed right here in the front. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you got to say what thus saith the Lord. Preachers, you gotta keep preaching the word. Prophets, you gotta keep prophesying the word. Singers, you gotta keep singing the word. Amen. Prayer warriors, praying saints, you gotta keep praying the word of God because it's that word in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Again, I say uh, that's changing things around. Uh, amen. The only thing you got to know is uh, what is the will of God. Uh, amen. The first thing I told you is this is my will to change it. Uh, and now God's trying to tell you. Amen. His will. Cut the TV off and find out his will. Uh, I can hear nobody. Cut Facebook off uh, and find out his will. Uh, shut down Instagram and find out his will. Uh,
cut down YouTube and find out his will. Come on, sir, open up your Bible. Get in your prayer closet and say, tell me the will, and I'll utter the will, and frame whatever you want. Show me what you want me to see. Tell me what you want me to hear. I'll say it. I'll pray it. I'll preach it. I'll prophesy it. Come on, somebody. And the more you do, amen, we're here today because somebody spoke it. You're saved today because somebody prayed it. We in the building today because somebody said it. You in the house you living in because you said it. You in the car you driving because you said it. I can't hear nobody. You save because you confess with your mouth. I can't hear no ba 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 shando. Re be be re be basa. Re kuna nama sando. Re kuna masa. Your words are real. The word of the Lord in your mouth is real. And there's some real things happening. You're not imagining anything. You're not crazy. This is not something. But you're not wasting your time. You're framing the world as God has willed it. You're making it happen as God has willed it. You're getting the lost saved as God has willed it. You're getting the sick healed as God has willed it. I can't hear no more motion. You're breaking down systems because God willed it. You're building up systems because God willed it. Pray the word. Speak to the bones. Speak to the bones. Speak to the bones. And say what thus saith the Lord. Bones, dry bones, you shall live again. Rukomasha, whatever need to be healed, whatever need to be destroyed, open your mouth and say, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. He come on, frame your world, frame your world, frame your world. Come on, frame that world, frame that world. Come on, Kobosha, move systems. You got power to move systems. You got power to bring change. You got power to legislate. You got jurisdictional power. Through the amen, the prayer that's in your mouth. The word, the word, the word. The word and the spirit. Right now, God, we thank you. We thank you that dry bones are living again. Everything dead gonna be resurrected. We thank you that revival, that revival is happening because you said it. We gonna frame the world. Call revival in. We gonna frame the world. Call the rhythm of life in. We're going to frame the world and get the saved, get the unsaved saved. We're going to frame the world and bring the money in and bring in the wealth. We're going to frame the world and buy buildings and land and inherit riches. Why we going to frame the world? I can't hear nobody. You commanded, they go change the landscape. God has commanded you to change the landscape. God has commanded you to change the landscape. Whatever is empty, fill it Fill it. Open your mouth and fill it. Open your mouth and say, God said it. God said it. God's not a man that he should lie. Who come on my shy? Evil shot. Come on, somebody say I'm healed. Tell him, come on. Come on, tell him I'm healed. Open your mouth and say, My body is healed. My mind is healed. My family is healed. Yeah, that's it. That's it. you to know it's not church as usual God wants you to know your life come on is being shifted to another place God wants you to know the power of the tree of life is in your lips come on somebody the tree of life is in your lips My God, my God, my God. Hey, y'all, I'm a salam, Come on, cook out my shando. That's why your prayer got to shift. Come on, somebody. It's got to shift and speak the word of God. Talk what he says. Let me give you these two more scriptures. Amen. Woohoo! Glory. That's it. Glory be to God. My Lord, my Lord, praise our God. 
Proverbs 15 and 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverse, distorted, crooked, therein is a breach in the spirit. A wholesome, a healing, a curative medi medicine. That word wholesome in the mm. Hebrew means cure, health, sound, medicine, curative. Look at this. That if your tongue is being used by God, it has the power to cure. It has the power to bring health and soundness. A good tongue is medicine. And it says, to what extent, to what dimension? He said, it, it's a tree of life. Tree of life, I've heard that before. Genesis. Want some more room? He put the tree of life there. And it was meant for them to eat of it and live forever. But God wouldn't let Adam and Eve eat of the tree of life. Because in their sin, because they would have lived forever of the brown in their sin. So he had to take, remove the tree of life from that paradise. Because what's the tree of life? You have the, from eating of that tree, you can live forever. The tree of life, you read in Revelation, it brings the fruit thereof, will cure and heal the nation. Now God is saying you have the power to speak his word, pray his word, say what he says, and it will bring life. That's why Ezekiel could speak to the bones because the word that he uttered was the tree of life. And the figurative sense, the tongue. But if it's crooked, but if it's crooked, it'll bring a breach. So you got to make sure that it's never crooked. Proverbs 4 and 20. Talking about the word of faith. Framing the world. Praying the word. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thee. For they are life unto those that find it. What's life unto the, the word? And help to all their flesh. Lord, how am I going to get healed? Speak his word. Lord, how is this situation to ever recover? Whether it be physical, mental, financial, emotional, geographical, systems, political. How? Open your mouth. There are other processes that come after the word. Told you last week, when Ezekiel prophesied in the vision, there was processes that had to take place that's yet happening today that impacts the prophecy in Ezekiel 37 concerning Israel. Keep thy heart with all thy diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee the forward or the crooked mouth and perverse lips. Put it far from thee. In other words, God said, give your mouth to me and it will be a tree of life. It will heal. It will heal. It will cure. It will cure your situation. It will cure. Speak his word. But you can't give your mouth to the devil and to the things of God. You all right? I, 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 this is conclusion. These are conclusion. Final remark. Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. You have it, somebody. Let's see, I got it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Wait a minute. In other words, don't lose it. Amen. He wasn't saying you shouldn't say it. He was saying keep the word in your mouth. It should not depart from being said. It will not, don't refrain from it. 
But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Well, meditate, I thought it was contemplate. Think about it. But yet you, you, you involve the mouth with it, God. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For, thou, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. In other words, don't lose the word, Joshua. Keep it on your lips. It's through this word, Joshua, you will, you will have good success. How? You got, to, you got to meditate by saying. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Get ready. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, in the word of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. What is that? Ask the Jew, ask the Hebrew. Saying it, you see them at the wailing wall, muttering, meditating the word of God. So the word was never meant to just park in your heart. It was never meant to just settle in your mind. It was never ever meant for that. Merely alone. The word that God gives us was always meant to be spoken. That is rhema. And when you speak it, you frame the world. Your world. You frame it. I was sitting in my backyard. The testimony of victory is unfolding. But I made up my mind. I sit in the backyard. And when I sit in the backyard, I look up at the sky. And from my vantage point, I see the planes coming in from the north from the north, going towards, coming in from the north, traveling more like southwest towards Kennedy from my backyard. I see it. Many of you can see the planes from your vantage point. And I've heard people, and you know you've heard people say, now they don't, they're not here today, the pastor said, you coming to Ghana, and people prophesy you're going to Ghana, you're going to Nigeria, you're going to Israel. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. And I'm, and inside I'd be like, no, thank you. I, Move the flowers so they can look at me so the saints can see. You know, and I'm like, okay. I'm going, I look at Pastor Saul and Mother, y'all going for me. I look at the son, y'all going for me. And the Holy Ghost said, now you stop. You know, I, I, I desire. So now when I see the planes, I said, because y'all know I don't like flying. Okay, all right, so I'm ready. I said, I'm going to fly in that plane <laughs> one day. When I see Swiss Air, I say, I'm going to get in that plane. I say, I'm going to frame my world according to the will of God. Because it's his will that I go to nations, not just globe, not just virtue. So now when I see that, I say, I'm going to get in that plane. I said, I'm going to Ghana. I'm going to Ghana. I'm going to Ghana, Moody. I'm going. And I said, and I'm going to be okay. Because I used to love to fly in the planes. And I said, I'm going to enjoy it like I used to. I'm framing my world by the word of God. I can't hear nobody. You got to frame yours. Amen. You don't have to be. It, it, things that you're fighting now. Things that you're. I, I'm going to walk in my deliverance. Come on, somebody. Those that are sick and those that need to be delivered. Those that are in wheelchair. And God, show you walking. You need to open up your mouth. So I'm going to walk up out this wheelchair one day. I'm going to walk. Come on, somebody. God's giving you visions of healings and deliverances and breakthroughs and visions about you and visions about people you care about and visions about people that you're praying for. He showed you in dreams and visions. Open your mouth and say what thus saith the Lord and put the word with it. Come on. Hallelujah. And put that God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. You got to frame it and you have power and we have a responsibility to change the landscape. It's not about I wish I could do it. I, I feel a little something in me. Today I feel it. It's not what you feel. It's the charge. Come on, somebody. It's the charge that God's given you. Open your mouth, but make sure your life is in alignment, that there's no breach in your spirit. Things are hindered because there's a breach. Close the breach. Close the breach. How many?
many years. Look at Hollywood. Satan knows it better than many saints around. What are you saying? Look at Hollywood. Take some of the latest catastrophes in the last five or ten years. Take COVID, other catastrophes. When it comes out, when it comes out, Dr. Vet, if you listen, the young people know more about it. They'll say, they said that on Bart Simpson five and ten years ago. But then they, they will show the clip that certain world catastrophes was already spoken in a movie, on a cartoon. You know why? The devil knows the power of a spoken word. And five years ago, there was a, a clip when COVID came out. There was a clip where Barton, uh, many years ago, on a cartoon, said something about COVID or whatever. And I was said, Hollywood, influenced by a satanic world, will take a rhema from Satan or spoken word from Satan, put it in a picture, make a movie out of it, and two or three years later, you see it play out. So the world of darkness takes the power of an utterance from their dark world. Put it out there, frame their system, and you see it. And we sit back. We rather cuss each other out than to speak a rainbow. I can't hear nobody. Come on, somebody. When the last time you cussed somebody out? Just speak a rainbow. Don't tell on yourself. We got power. I, 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 I'm finished for today. I, I'm, I'm finished for today. I'm finished for today. Just take a picture. Take a picture. Take a picture. Now move this out the way. Move this out the way. You can move it out the way. Be careful with my table. I frame your world. You in trouble if you break it. Praying his word. Knowing his word. Believing his word. Walking in his word. Take it all away. Donnie McCookland's song about um, give me your holy word something like that speak to my heart now let's look again this is where we start but this is not where you must be stuck hello this is where we started nothing and many people live their life just like this, nothing ever changing, ever changing. Don't get stuck. Not operating in the power of the spoken word. Believing what God said, saying what God said, praying what God said, speaking the dry bones again and 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 again until you see what God said. Elisha heard the sound of rain. Heard the sound of rain. A prophetic rhema hit his ear. He heard rain. And he prayed until the servant saw the cloud. Pray until you see the cloud. Speak until you see the cloud. I'm coming out. I told you, I've told you the testimony. I started out by saying, I know it's not cute and it's not a pretty testimony. And when I slipped into drug addiction, but when I was out there, I remind you, when I was out there one day standing on a corner, hustling, looking disgraceful. And the person I was with, they look worse than me, I think. I might have looked worse than them. I didn't. I don't know. But when I stood there in that doorway, I didn't know what I was saying. But Lori, I said, this ain't me. 
I didn't know it was the God. I said, this ain't me. I was skinny and bones. Backslidden. Lost everything. Skinny and bones. Working up the hustle to get my next crack hit. But a reality hit me. Mother never a rally hit me that I don't belong here. I looked at the person next to me. I said, I don't belong here. I'm coming out of this. That one word as a backslider was significant. The angels took that word and brought my deliverance and delivered me from addiction. If you're listening today and you are addicted to drugs or anything, open up your mouth and say, God said, I'm coming out of this and I've been called by God to impact the world. That's it. Open your mouth and say, I'm coming out of this. I was praying for somebody in the hospital, the facility where they are. I kept saying to them, you coming out of this. You coming out of this. You coming out of this. And the morning, every day, I've been saying, you coming out of this. I started them, I start seeing them doing stuff with their body I hadn't seen in the last four months. And they shaking their head. Now they shaking their head. And I said, you coming out of this. And they shaking their head. Am I right, Heather? They didn't do that before. They haven't done it in, this is July. They haven't done it in five months. But now, they shaking their head. You coming out of this. The spoken word, if I had never said nothing, they wouldn't be shaking their head. Come on, with the prayers of the saints that are praying, come on, and those that are coming and speaking into their ear, they can now do this. Come, I can't hear nobody saying nothing up in here. The power of the spoken word. Dry bones shall live again. Mountains got to agree with what you say. Rocks got to agree with what you say. Rivers and deserts got to agree with what you say. I can hear nobody saying nothing up in here. Come on, let's stand on our feet, everybody. Stand on your feet, everybody. Come on, hallelujah. This day of seeing nothing is over. We come together on Friday night. We come in with it. The word of God. Take the word. Like, grab it like the horns of the altar. God, you said, and declare and speak his word. We're not coming. Saying, please, Lord. We're coming and saying what God said. Hiya, Bosha. Closing up every breach. Because the Bible said, but the perverse lips will bring a breach. Your mouth, your words is a tree of life, says the Lord. Cure medicine is in your mouth. Hallelujah. There are processes. All those things will flow out. As I was preparing to come down, the Lord spoke something and he said, tell the people for the next 30 days, I want you to listen, we'll send out an email. For the next 30 days, we're going to put our tongue on a fast and our ears on a fast. Listen. Your tongue on a fast. You're going to see more results. If for nothing else, just as much, but I say to you, more results. And if you gave up water, I mean, gave up food and chicken and ribs and whatever you like and curry, you're going to see more results if you do this fast like the Holy Spirit said. What do you mean? Somebody get me Philippians 4. Whatsoever things are lovely, find that. Is it Philippians 4 and what? 4 and 8. Get a microphone. Philippians 4 and 8. These are the guidelines. Listen, Global Church. Put it on the screen. You put it on the screen, Lakeisha. 4 and 8. Philippians 4 and 8. God told me, he said, tell the people for 30 days. Today's date is what? The 11th. 30 days from now is what date? August something. Some of you are going to go further. 
body of Christ, if we do what the Lord said, we're going to have what he said. 30 days, we're going to be on a tongue fast. Wayne, it won't always be easy, but give it over to the Lord. Saints, it won't always be easy, but a tongue fast. What's the guideline? What's the guideline? Number one, say what God said. Say what God said. If you, if you slip and say, I said something that's not of God, make it right. Make it right. Say, that one, oh, that one God, oh, 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 that one God. Read Philippians 4 and 8, loud. What Finally, I, brethren, oh, they, uh -huh. whatsoever things are true. All right, stop right there. Tongue fast. These are the things we talk about, whatever's true. Whatever is true, not your truth. Your truth is new age concept and language I speak my truth well what's your truth speak his truth whatever the Bible says that the word psalm the works of the Lord are done in truth you want to see the manifestation of God's power the works are done in truth not through deception whatsoever so we speak whatever is true now somebody say How's my hair? How my shoes look? You don't have to go all out talking about they're ugly. Say they're interesting. So we're not going to be abusive saying everything that comes to your mind that is true. Speak the word of the Lord. Speak truth in wisdom, but not in deception. Next. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are honest. We're on a tongue fast. Honest. If you can't give an honest answer, don't say anything. Else. Don't lie. Don't lie. There's no such thing as a white lie. Lie is a lie. Go ahead. Whatsoever things are just. Let's go back to honest because in this whole new world, you can speak through Facebook with your picture. Now you come on, you go on there, got a big old something on your hand and Making like it's a diamond, talking about I came into my millions. You know good and well the thing is fake, is plastic. Talking about, I'm a, I ain't talking about what you say in faith. But now, the whole landscape, you can put something on Instagram just to deceive. The language now is not just what you say with your mouth. What do you say through social media? Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Read. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, Go ahead. whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are just. Speak on those things. The Bible says telling you to think on those things. Speak what is just, not what is unjust. Don't be crooked. Don't be a backstabber. Don't try to take somebody down. Don't try to come up. Whatsoever things are just and right. Go ahead. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure. So we no dirty jokes. Come on, no backstabbing. I, I'm telling the Holy Ghost, say, go on this. Play with it if you want to. Read the Bible. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Whatsoever things are lovely. Good. Speak the good. You may see something, the bad in someone. Speak the good. Bring out the good. Whatever's lovely. It's a beautiful day. It doesn't mean you have to go shama, 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 hama, ta, ta, ta all day. Whatsoever things are lovely. Bring out the good. Speak. Put good things in the atmosphere. Read the Bible. Whatsoever things are good of good report. Of good report. Go ahead. If there be any virtue. Any virtue. And if there be any praise. Any praise. Think on these things. The Bible said think on those things. Come on. And if you can think on it, you can talk on it. You can speak on it. That's your guidelines. Of, it doesn't mean amen. Come on. That's the guidelines. There's going to be some difficult situations, but at the end, even if you get into an argument, come back and make it right. So, you know, I, you know, I had this little thing with you, and we, and we had an exchange or whatever. And, but now, I want to say, I'm sorry, or let me make it right, whatever it is. There's a deception in what you did. There's a backstabbing in what you did. Whatever it is, we on a tongue face, which means you're not gossiping. Come on, I can't hear nobody. You're not lying. You're building up for 30 days, for 30 days. Watch what you repeat. Watch what you tell. And if 
You got to guard your mouth and your thinking. You got to guard your hearing. So whatever's not lovely, don't listen to it. Whatever's not of a good report, don't listen to it. Whatever's not just, don't listen to it. Let me tell you, you got to be very careful because the new, the new wave of communication is social media. And you can backslide just from social media. You can, hey amen, you can commit an abomination just from social media. I can't hear nobody. You may never say it, but you sort of typed it in. Y'all all right? So God said to this house for 30 days, watch what, glory. And if you can think on those things, if you can speak on those things, you can pray on those things. And say, God, guard my lips, guard my lips, guard my lips. Teach me how to speak your word. The rhema is in your mouth. We come back, we see these 30 days. This symbol was symbolic for what is empty will be full. You're going to be full of treasures. You're going to be full of this. And I got this and I spoke this because the enemy didn't allow your tongue to be a bridge. We've all, we've all, come on. We all, at some level. How many, amen, we gonna do it? Praise our God, we gonna do it? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise right now. Speak to my heart. Come on, wait, Brian. Come on, come on. Let's open up our mouth. Let's sing it. Father God, we thank you for the word of God today. We thank you, God, that you've given us power now to frame the world. You have challenged us. God, there's something you want to bring into our lives through the power of the spoken word. And so now, God, we speak your word. God, we speak your word right now. We give ourselves over to you, God, to frame the world. We thank you for the anointing of Ezekiel resting upon us now. Thank you, God, that there's a fresh anointing resting upon your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we praise you right now. We praise you right now. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, go ahead. Come on. Just let your spirit, God, and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Give me a holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. And give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do, I won't go alone, I'll never go on my own, just let your spirit guide, and let your word abide, speak to my heart, speak to my heart, speak to my heart. Everybody praise our God. There's a shift coming to the Kirby home. There's a shift coming to the Kirby home. God says, saturate your house with the word of God. Keep saying what God said. Amen. Say what God showed you. Say what God showed you. Somebody say, Lord, I want you to come into my home too. Amen. Keep saying what God showed you. Keep saying what God said. God said, speak to those situations. Amen. Carry with family and keep speaking. Glory be to God. Everything God showed you, everything God will for you. Open your mouth and begin to say it. Somebody, amen. There's a new violence. There's a new violence hitting the body of Christ. As we speak what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, ball up your fist. And I'm not saying, say, my mouth is a weapon. Say, my praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. Glory to God. Amen. Now shout amen. Oh, 
looking to it. I want you to say something with you. Come on. Somebody say, when my enemy came against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Say, enemy, foes, stumble and fall right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Say it one more time. Say, when my enemy and my foes came against me, they stumbled and fell. Say, enemy, foes, stumble and fall in Jesus' name. Come on. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. The walls are tumbling down. Stumbling down. The walls are falling down. The walls are falling down. Stumble and fall. So stumble and fall. In Jesus' name, I command you. I command you. According to Psalm 27, stumble, fall, and never get up again. Jesus. Somebody say every word spoken against me, against my destiny, against my life. Stumble and fall in Jesus' name and never get up again. Never get up again. Open your mouth, say no weapon. Say no weapon. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Stumble and fall. Stumble and fall in Jesus' name. And say I lose victory. I lose victory. I'm on seal and I'm higher. I'm on shooting. There it is. Now clap if you believe it. Clap if you believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I believe, I believe, I believe. Come on, one more time, one more to say, all of my enemies, all of my enemies, all enemies to my destiny, stumble, fall, flat, in Jesus' name, come on, now come on, sit with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you framing your world. You framing your world. You framing your world. Come on. Come on. Your mouth, your words are a tree of life. Your words are a tree of life. The word of the Lord in your mouth is a tree of life. Come on. Try bones. Live, 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 live. Live, 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 live. Try bones. Live. 